You know, if you're ever in need of having to record a voiceover, your, your voice onto your computer, and you got a Mac, here's the cool thing. There are four free programs that we all get with the Mac, just because they love us and our credit card went through, <laughs> that you can use to record a voiceover. So in this video, I want to show you how to use each one of them, and then you can just use the one you like whenever you need to record a voiceover. First up is GarageBand. I'm going to read a passage from my new book about live streaming, actually called Live Streaming Made Easy, and I'm going to read this same thing in each program I'm going to show you just so we kind of get the same apples to apples or voice to voice demo. So what you do is this, we've got GarageBand open. We're going to start a new project. We're going to choose that and we're going to do voiceover right now. So we're going to click that and we're going to hit create. Now, what I like to do down here is make sure that my audio is set to the audio I want. And right now I'm using the Elgato Wave XLR. So that is correct. To me, uh, GarageBand is cool, but it is, um, it's it's pretty intensive. But just hang with me because the other ones you're going to see too. So when you're ready to record, you just click that. And I'm going to mute that because we don't want that. According to Wikipedia, the very first live stream, or it was, it was called live casting, was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named Steve Mann. As the story goes, man started experimenting with computers you could actually wear and streaming video, which eventually led to the wearable wireless camera. So when I'm done, I'm going to hit stop. And if I bring it back right here, then we can see exactly what we just put. According to Wikipedia, the very first live stream, or it was, it was called live... So now when we're done and we want to export it, all you do, you go to share, export song to disc. Now, again, GarageBand, I think, was made just as much for music anyway. But just when you do that, this is going to pop up. You can call it whatever. We're just going to call this GarageBand uh, Demo. And I'm going to change where it's going to go to. I'm just going to put it to my desktop. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. You can change all of this. I'm going to leave, put it at maybe highest quality. We'll do 256 MP3, which is generally what you want. You hit export and it's done. Next, one of my favorites is voice memos. It comes on any Mac product you have. This is a Mac mini. It's also on my Mac uh, Air, my MacBook Air. It's also my iPhone, which is where I use it a ton. But it's really simple to do. Once you launch it, you hit this big red button right here and we're recording. According to Wikipedia, the very first live stream, or as it was called, live casting, was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named Steve Mann. As the story goes, Mann shared ex started experimenting with computers you could actually wear and streaming video, which actually led to the wearable wireless camera. And when you're done, now you can actually pause the recording here, or I can just hit done, and there it is. I can come up here and rename it. So we'll call this voice memo demo. It rhymes. And if I click that, then here it is right here, right there. And we're recording. Story goes, man shared, ex started it. Now you also have several options here you can do. You notice you can edit the recording right here. You can trim it. And the, the thing with the editing is it gives you different things you can do up here. You get this, you can skip silence, which I find is a little awkward. Uh, you can enhance the recording, but again, you don't have to do any of that. And here's here's the cool thing. When you're ready, drag it over to the desktop, and it just saves it off right there. Next up, QuickTime. Launch it and close that, and you want to go to New Audio Recording. Uh, it's a fairly small screen. It won't get any bigger than this. Before you record... What you want to do is double check your audio source where your microphone is coming in. Mine is right now I'm using the Elgato Wave, but if you had any other things, you could use that as well. Click that. I leave the, the quality as maximum. And literally, you hit record, and we're recording. According to Wikipedia, the very first live stream, or as it was called, live casting, was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named Steve Mann. As the story goes, man started experimenting with computers you could actually wear and streaming video, which eventually led to the wearable wireless camera. And when we're done, you hit this, and it'll open it, hit record, and we're in the 1980s by a guy named Steve. Now, I usually do this, and it's going to ask me to save it, and we're going to export this as the QuickTime demo. 
And again, wherever you wanna save it, I'm just gonna save it to the desktop and we're gonna hit save. Next up, iMovie. Despite some pros like dissing iMovie, there is nothing wrong with iMovie. It's just a really basic program that's actually gotten better over the years. So if you've never edited, don't be scared of iMovie. Unlike the other ones, you have to actually add a video to the timeline first. So I'm gonna go up here. I've got this, uh, I'm just gonna drop it down in here and I'm going to lower that audio so we don't hear this. And by the way, <laughs> these are my big fat feed. It was a video I was doing for my Amazon shop where I actually, a lot of times I'll shoot the video and then I'll record the voiceover later. You see this mic? When I click this, and I hit this, let me move my head, and I click this right here, it's gonna count me down and watch right here. According to Wikipedia, the very first live stream, or as it was called, live casting, was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named Steve Mann. As the story goes, Mann started experimenting with computers you could actually wear and streaming video, which eventually led to the wearable wireless camera. And when you're done, you hit stop and here it is, which <laughs> I realize makes no sense to the video, but just the first live stream, or as it was called, live casting was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy. I'm sorry. Steve I'm just getting it. I'm getting a kick out of that. I'm talking about live streaming while I'm as the story Bob goes, man big started experimenting like with com size 100s. All right. And when you're done, you go up here to export and you can export the file right here. Since we're only going to do audio only, I would just do that. I would change it to MP3. There's nothing else you need to do, even though you could make it here. We'll say iMovie demo, and then that way it's already done. We don't worry about tags. We hit next, and we're going to, I think we're just going to send it to desktop here. And well, we'll do save that as uh, iMovie demo and there we go and it's exporting and i don't know why there's a big shot of my head looking up but there you go enjoy that free of charge okay so now that we've done all our recordings i've got them laid out here so you can actually see them and and listen to them and and they're in the order we did them and so i thought i'd play each one i've queued them up as much as i could but just to give you an idea of what they sound like so we'll start first with garage band according to wikipedia the very first live stream or it was it was called live casting was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named here's voice memo according to wikipedia the very first live stream or as it was called live casting was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named Steve Mann. Quick time. According to Wikipedia, the very first live stream, or as it was called, live casting, was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named Steve Mann. And uh, iMovie. According to Wikipedia, the very first live stream, or as it was called, live casting was done sometime in the 1980s by a guy named Steve Mann. One thing I will say is that iMovie does have something that Final Cut Pro has. You can actually do voice isolation, which would have increased it. I didn't play with the audio level on any of these. GarageBand doesn't surprise me that it's more robust because it's really just made for this. But you could export these exactly as they are, or you could put them into a program and do a little editing as well. Now there is another option. It's not free, but it's also one of my favorites and it's Final Cut Pro. Now you can actually get Final Cut Pro for a bit and use it for free. If you wanna see how to record your voiceover in Final Cut Pro and use all the tools it has, check out the video on the screen. Hope you got something out of this. Subscribe if you liked it. I'm Kevin, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.